So the queen has one sole purpose, and that is to lay eggs and keep the population for the hive. Queens can live two to three years on their own. Uh, commercial beekeepers tend to replace them every year. So I just let mine do their thing. I try not to, you cool. know, get in there too much. <laughs> um, but without a okay. queen, you know, you don't have the population going. So then the other bees are going to take it upon themselves. And they are what we call laying worker bees. So they're going to make drones, which are the male bees, to go and hopefully, you know, populate with more queens God, and keep yeah. the process going. Our potential, it's exponential. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to another podcast of Abundant Souls. I'm here with my special guest, here to talk to us about bees. Alexis, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. Heck yeah. So we're about to get bees soon. You're about to bless us with some bees. Yep. I'm going to bring some hives over to your house. Fruit cool. trees are very excited. Yeah. How many? Um, so we're going to start off with about five hives. Okay. Five hives. Like 60, 70,000 bees maybe. Wow. Yeah. So it's going to help the pollination and like more fruiting. Yep. You're honestly going to notice a huge boom. When I first brought the bees to my house, I felt like my garden exploded. Really? Yeah, they just went bananas. They were everywhere. Really good helping with pollination. Um, also pretty good with just like other insects too. It was nice to have that mix. I think everyone mm. is very happy about it. All the other bugs. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, so tell people about that because I think a lot of people, the audience wants to know about bees, as do I. Like That's why I'm super excited you're going to show us the ways. But like maybe what's something... Like, good for someone to know, like, why do we need bees in the first place? So we need bees because they're one of the most popular pollinators. So right now we're talking about honeybees, which is one of, you know, the thousand different types of species. They're all equally important, but honeybees are just a livestock, essentially, that we can help with this process, which is why it was really important that people got involved when honeybee populations started declining. Because it's one of the main pollinators that we could actually really hands-on help you know, opposed to other things, uh, you know, dragonflies, butterflies, God. whoever it may be. More like wild pollinators. Yeah. And so the bees the, are more domesticated a little bit, right? They like to, you know, let you think so. Yeah, <laughs> you can only control them so much. Do you get stung a bunch or no? Um, sometimes I do. I'll go like months without getting stung and then some days I'll walk away like... Oof, that was a rough one. <laughs> wow. So, yeah. yeah, is it? So, tell us about it. Cause I hear beer, bees are really like spiritual, like the energy and all that. Like, yes. <laughs> so, beekeeping is actually a very Zen activity. Um, I feel like when I first started, I was just so scared of working with them. But over the years now, um, when I get in the hive, you know, I call them my girls. So, I just talk to them the whole time. Um, but you just go very slow and like you're breathing with them and you, you feel the hive and like their energy because sometimes they're really loud and they're buzzing and like sometimes they're really quiet and you'll pick up a frame and it's like they're not even moving. Wow. So every day what is very that? different. That's so interesting. A lot of it is personality too or like it's a good way to see what's going on in the hive. Um, so if a hive is queenless, for example, they're typically mm. really rowdy and loud. So if I get in if a hive. they don't have a queen. Yeah. They need to have a queen or they're not happy. Wow. So, yeah, if I get in a hive <laughs> and it's really loud and they're buzzing a lot, right away I know something might be off mm. today. So the queen. So tell us about, like, that process because I've hear, heard, like, it's all about the queen and to move <laughs> the, the hives, all these things. What? Why is the queen such so important? So the queen has one sole purpose, and that is to lay eggs and keep the population for the hive. Queens can live two to three years on their own. Uh, commercial beekeepers tend to replace them every year. So I just let mine do their thing. I try not to, you cool. know, get in there too much. <laughs> um, but without a okay. queen, you know, you don't have the population going. So then the other bees are going to take it upon themselves. And they are what we call laying worker bees. So they're going to make drones, which are the male bees, to go and hopefully, you know, populate with more queens God, and yeah. keep the process going. The queens are there for the re reproduction aspect. They're the only course. ones that can make more. Wow. So everyone else, you know, in a hive, everybody has their own job. So that's her job. But without her, everything is kind of out of order. Wow. So it's, beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> so everyone has their little roles. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're making drones. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <big>. Yes. <laughs> 
<laughs> yep. So the drone bees. Um, so drone bees are the male bees. It's the only boys in the hive. And their one sole purpose is to mate with queens. So from the day that they're born, wow. they literally just wander around. They are fed. They are bathed. They don't do absolutely anything. <laughs> Classic. Not really, I swear. <laughs> um, but yeah, after 20 days or bees, so. These are bees, everybody. <laughs> yeah, just bees. <laughs> they go on a mating flight. So it'll be a cluster of, you know, thousands of bees, like 100 feet up in the air, just <sighs> playing. Um, and then that's it. Once they finish the process, their lifetime has ended. Wild. After that bee storm. Mm-hmm. Yep, after the bee storm. Interesting. Yeah. Um, so a queen bee will mate with you know five to 15 different males and she'll store up all that sperm and different genetics and that's what she'll use throughout her years to lay eggs um so like whenever you have a virgin queen whenever she first hatches she'll be in the hive for a couple days and she'll be really thin and like narrow and you'll know that she's mated because when they come back they're just fat and juicy uh i had a virgin queen recently or it was a new queen i should say she wasn't my old queen she just looked different her coloring was different but she was very thick and I was like, whoa, you are new. I can just tell you do not look like the other one. So you could tell when they're pregnant and all that. Yeah, they just, wow. they're just a lot bigger because right. they have, you know, millions of eggs essentially stored up. Is that your kind of job out there to, to like to detect and kind of like plants, right? To ID kind of who's who? Uh, yeah. So every time you get in the hive, you generally always want to see your queen. She's really sneaky, though, so sometimes it's actually really hard to find her. Really? Yeah, you will find out soon enough. Um, (laughs) (laughs) But you can always look for eggs and larvae, which is a really good sign. Like, oh, she's still here, or she was at least here three days ago. Very cool. Yeah. So tell us, so we're learning all the good stuff about the bees and why Mm -hmm. we we need them and, like, their roles to play. Can you talk a little bit about, because I've heard that the commercial industry and, like, packing hives and just the practices aren't so good that we do it today in agriculture. Like what's the difference between like how they do it and how you do it? So I don't know too much about necessarily the bad practices. I think it's more of there could be a lot of negative repercussions from commercial beekeeping. So we'll use like the almond pollination, for example. Say if Mm -hmm. I took my hives and I sold them to go and pollinate all the almonds. The bees are in a really stressful environment for one. They're all packed onto, you know, these massive 18 wheelers. They're strapped together. They're super hot. They're not doing any of their normal work and they have to survive that trip just on the resources that they have, which could also be like dangerous in itself. Gotcha. You know, wait, so what do you, wait, what did you, what did you say? I'm sorry to interrupt. No. As far, I'm just curious what you're, what you meant. Like they're not doing what they're typically doing. What are they typically doing? Like instead of like pollinating almonds. Uh, yeah, the daily life of the bee, you know, they're out pollinating, they're working, they're cleaning. Um, More but when, like biodiversity, you're saying. Yeah, but during that travel process, which I think is the scariest part, they're locked in that box. So they mm. can't leave and they're really uh, sensitive to stress too. Totally. So you don't want to do that. And then the other issue that I've seen, I watched this great documentary. I think it was called The Pollinator, which everybody should watch. The Pollinator. It was really about beekeeping, commercial beekeeping. Okay. But it was these people and they had like apple farms and they had hives everywhere. And then their neighbors sprayed and it killed all of their bees. Mm -hmm. So that's something that you have to worry about too, is you don't know what anyone else is doing. And it's always really scary you could walk out any day and all your hives could be dead and there's no going back. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's maybe that's what you're saying. So you're saying yeah. the bad the bad stuff that happens is byproducts of like yeah. a like bringing the bees like on for a week they're locked up going mm-hmm. to Cali or something. Got it. Or they're spraying next to cuz that happens all the time even in in town, you know, like spraying I drugs. Know. Like people are just out here. <laughs> I asked, I think I asked you like four times, like you don't spray, right? Yeah, that's right. You just never know. Because bees, but here's the thing I think this is the punchline bees are just tuned in. They're affected by that, right? Mm-hmm. But all of us are affected by 100%. all of creation, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just like another sign. It's like, you know, if you're killing that animal, what do you think it does to you? Like anything else. That's right. It, if it kills something, it can't be good for you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I guess I'm I'm realizing it takes like managing the bees properly, right? Mhm. Like and that's kind of what your role is. Yeah. 
yeah <laughs> like so that's what i do yeah. <laughs> which is epic yeah like how is it like doable for people to do it like in towns and stuff because maybe they're a little intimidated because they're gonna get stung or something yeah urban beekeeping is a huge thing um like cool. if you go to new york you'll see hives in random spots which was really fun I, I have mine it. in my backyard in a very small area. Where at? Like in town? Yeah, just in Jupiter. Cool. Um, haven't had any issues. My neighbors are okay with it. Uh, so bees themselves, all right. They go, a bee will go three miles from its hive, but they don't really cluster that much around the hive area because anyone who's leaving is going to go out foraging. Chances are they've already been through every plant within 20 feet, right? Um, so for me, for example, my hives are in my backyard. You can't tell that I have bees in my backyard. Like my neighbors don't notice them. I've walked on the sidewalk. You don't even see them. Wow. They're yeah. out and about. Yeah. They're just cruising around, right. you know, if, and if you go in the backyard, obviously you see them, but like I'll garden right in front of the hive. You know, I s <laughs> will lay <laughs> under them and watch them. Um, and That's another level. I don't know if I'm going to be doing that right away. It's that just... was a spiritual experience. That was really neat. Really? Yeah, they do these things called orientation flights. So it's every afternoon for me from like 3 to 5 p.m. is the key window. And it's all the new bees that are going to be the foragers. And so they're getting the lay of the land. So they do like this bee tornado like 30 feet up in the air. And they just start going out little by little and coming back, making markers, getting an idea of where they are, like pinpointing all their locations. Um, but one day it was during like midst of spring. So it was, you know, the bee baby boom. And there was just like thousands of bees in my backyard, like doing the tornado. So yeah, <laughs> Orientation I, time. Yeah. So I just went and laid and like just watched them. And it was really neat. Spiritual experience. Yeah. 100%. Very It was cool. fun. Cool. It's another piece to the puzzle. It totally seems that way, right? Yeah. Like cities need it, right? Urban abundance. Like cities need it. Everyone needs, you know, natural. Yeah, yeah you got to have pollinators. And especially in these urban areas where you know, too, you know, there isn't a whole lot of like native planting or uh, plants and things that are really good for the environment and the soil. So it's really yes. important that we can at least make up for it with something else like the pollinators. Yeah. yeah. So we provide the pollinators. Like, what are some plants we could plant that they really like? That... They love everything. They're really not picky, <laughs> wow. honestly. So flowering Anything goodness. with flowers, yeah. Okay. Um, they love my giant milkweed. They go bananas for the salvia. They just lose it on that. Um, salvia. Mm -hmm. I've seen that. They really like the zinnias. They're really not picky. There isn't a flower that I have that they aren't attracted to. Mm -hmm. They love Tulsi, holy basil. Yeah. They'll honestly eat anything. Um, I recently got my hive inspected and the lady was telling me a story of there was this like summer camp, we'll say, and they threw away all the Halloween candy and then they had to call to get bees removed because the bees were eating all the candy and it was just like an explosion. What? Yeah, and she's <laughs> checked hives where the honey was blue because they were eating like ices or something, or no it'll be like way. cherry coke flavored. That's a trip. Yeah, they don't discriminate. They... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like humans, you leave a bunch of soda around or Halloween for kids. Yeah. They're going to eat it. Yeah. They'll do anything. <laughs> they just like sugar. <laughs> wow. I love these analogies. Yeah. <laughs> so cool. Let's shift gears because we have so m only have so much time. Okay. I'm so intrigued by you swim with sharks. Is <laughs> yes. <that right? laughs> yeah. Can you tell us about that? <laughs> yep. So I work on Shark Safari. It's a dive boat here in Jupiter. Um, I came down here like seven years ago. I was, you know, 19 years old. I really love the ocean, wanted to get involved, went on a dive with my now boss, Matt. And then I pretty much moved down here right after. And I was like, I want to do this. Um, so yeah, we so take... people go out and literally on these safaris, shark safaris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. So we take guests out to swim with sharks. Um, you know, we see lots of other wildlife too, cause we're diving the Gulf stream. So it's like a wildlife highway. Like if you imagine <sighs> Nemo, you know, when the turtles are surfing on the current, yeah. that's what we're diving. Wow. So um, there's like every fish in the sea. Yeah. You see so much. Um, every day is different. Every dive is different. You never know. Um, but that is a spiritual experience in itself, you know, wow. you Tell never us about that. in underwater. Yeah. You know, you're just, it's very quiet and you would think it would be like really loud and intense cause it's like these big sharks and like, you've heard so many stories, 
but they're just really smooth and gentle and you just kind of watch them interact how they would any other day um mm. and then you'll have like different species come in and you know it's how they kind of like interact with each other and there's a little bit of dominance and wow. it's just very uh what would be the word humbling i oh, guess word yeah. yeah super real mm -hmm. let's go and not like yeah because that's ridiculous there's no like dun 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 you no. know it's just the sea yeah it's very quiet and it's nice uh one of my favorite dives we had like 15 bull sharks and there's tons of fish it was crystal blue water and i was just laying on the buoy just watching everyone swim around and it's like this is like this is what life is about i could do this all day every wow. day <laughs> i sure. want to be a shark you may <laughs> Wow, you're making me want to do that. You should definitely come <laughs> out. It's such a <laughs> good time. Oh, 100%. Oh, my goodness. You'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. We have people come out Let's that can't it. swim. <laughs> like, you'll be good. <laughs> cool. Yeah, it's like going down a roller coaster your first time or something. Yeah, the first time's <laughs> always really freaking scary. I was terrified. Wow, I bet. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so you're not in like a cage or anything? Just... Nope. It's no cage. You just <laughs> snorkel, you know, mask fins. Um, you in just the, hop in the in water. Nature. Yeah. Hold on to the line and wow. enjoy yourself. They're majestic. That's that's wild. And I think I'm going to just because why not? Why not? Why not? You not? live in like the best spot in the world to do it. Wow. Jupiter. Yeah, truly. Honestly, because of the Gulf Stream, we just get so oh. many different species God. coming through. Like uh, I've met people who dive wow. in Hawaii and they don't even have the same experiences that we no do. Way. Right. Because they're in the middle of there. Yeah, like, yeah, it's just different. Interest, yeah. What kind of uh, fish have you seen out there? Um, I've seen a lot of different sharks. Uh, Jacks, Benita. Um, I'm like blinking big, now that big, you're asking like, me. Big fish. Uh, we had a massive leatherback come through last year. It was the turtle. Yeah. Biggest turtle I've ever seen in my life. Wow. We were finishing up a dive. It was like super murky, nasty day, you know, like not the best on the water. It was just me and my dive partner. We're getting in last, and I just saw this massive shadow coming up, and I was like, "Oh my god, it's a baby humpback whale!" Because it had Whoa. like the ridging. It was a leatherback turtle, which was just as <laughs> exciting. Um, but that was a really neat flyby. That was probably one of my favorite moments. Wow. But we've had um, all kinds of things come up: dolphins, uh, pilot wow. whales. Um, people have seen, you know, banner rays and whale sharks. There was a humpback here a couple of years ago. Really? Because there's not that many whales here, right? No. Interesting. But you just, you really just never know. Every day is totally different. Yeah. Um, you get a lot of the same sharks on dives, especially if you go often like me. You'll definitely start to see the same faces over and over again. The same sharks. Mm -hmm. Do you guys name them and stuff? Yes, a lot of them do have names. <laughs> They're all very popular. Wow. Well, because it's a community, you know, like there's multiple boats out here. So we all talk to each other and everyone will name someone and then it'll be like, oh, I saw, you know, like there was this one named Pepper. She was a sandbar and she had a lot of like white spots on the top of her head. Mm. But we would have Pepper like four days in a row and it's like, oh, like, you know, Janelle, I saw her too. Like she's really cute. Wow. So it's fun. That's amazing. You have relationships with these sharks, you guys. You That's know, amazing. kind of. Like, <laughs> it would be super fun to say that, like, Pepper also enjoys my company. But at the mm. end of the day, they are sharks. And you have to, like, respect them for what they are. Mm. It's, it's just nice respect. that we can share a space and, like, allow other people to see a different side of them. Mm. I love that approach. Respect. Yeah. So it's not like, hey, we're out here like looking like a circus no and i think that's what kind of hurts people when they come out on a dive is i think they expect it to be like this big like ego thing like super intense i swam with sharks but we always try to explain you know this should be a really like calm like zen activity for you where you're really just observing them and like understanding what they are down to their core you know because they obviously have this horrible name it's sharks, you know, mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. are what they are at the end of the day. But just to watch them swim and interact and be extremely curious creatures um, is just really exciting. And yeah. that's what I would want people to see when they come out on a dive. Yeah. I don't want them to be like, I swam with bull sharks today. Right. Look at me. Look what I did. It's like yes, you. Yeah. This, not no, you did not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I want to like know if I see like God in their eyes. <laughs> <laughs> it's very quiet. You will lock eyes with them though. Like they check you out. They're very interested. 
um, especially the pelagic species that we get during the summer because they've never seen anything like this. You know, they're in thousands feet of water. Right. So this, they're like, what is going on? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they're, we're not like their normal food, so they're not going to like just start. No. Yeah. Got you. I mean, they're <laughs> just like, like how bees aren't going to just out here stinging people all day. Dude, people always say that. They're like, this bee just stung me. It's like, no, you probably did something. Mm. Like, I have never just been stung. That's so true. By mine. Like, I'm just not buying it. <laughs> like, you were being whatever, unaware. Probably so. near a hive that you didn't see. Right. You know. Not acknowledging them. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> you were supposed to pay your respects before you walked by. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's right. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Yeah, so let's get back to the bees. By the way, that's epic. Go check out these sharks, guys. Yeah, shark I think safari. We're do it. Shark safari. Very fun. What do you think about this? Because I want to hear your opinion. Because you're into the bees, you're into like the ocean and all this stuff. And I'm sure a lot of gardeners are into that sort of stuff, right? Yeah. And I think it's just more of like being, right? Mm hmm. Like that's those fish are just, it's like being, and so are we in that yeah. moment. Yeah. Instead of like doing and, you know, getting distracted. You're just, you know, kind of like one with the earth. That sounds kind of lame, but, right. you know, it, it just brings you back down, you know, like having, you know, your feet in the dirt and playing with the flowers and watching what birds you have. Because if you don't know what birds you have in your yard, you're not paying enough attention. <laughs> like true. you have neighbors <laughs> that aren't your actual neighbors. Yeah. The crows were all going after like this big blue heron today. It was crazy. Really? Yeah. They're kind of bullies. Those guys. I have crows in my yard and I swear yeah. every time I get in the hives, they all gather together on the tree, like right in front of me and they all start squawking. And I know that they're just like, it's that crazy girl again. Like she's <laughs> playing with the bees. It's like a cartoon talking to each other. I swear it happens every time. <laughs> Wow, you're tuned in, man. This is cool. Yeah, I like the, it. The totally the birds that it's all here for us every day. You know, I think it's because I grew up on a ranch, so I was always like way out in the middle of nowhere. Mm. You know, like you have the coyotes at night. We had lots of wildlife, so yeah. I think it's just kind of what I've always known or been used to. Where um, Where was that? Where'd you grow up? Um, outside of Dallas in Texas. Yeah, so real ranch. Real ranch. We raced horses. I was a horse girl, and now I'm a bee girl. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Like you would race horses. Yeah, I did wow. not race them. I was way too small. Um, mm. I did like ride and do shows and stuff, but it was the family business. Cool. Gotcha. Yeah. Tell us about more of because we we gotta we gotta get hop off here soon. Okay. But so we did we get the hives. Mm -hmm. We're doing our thing. Yep. How do we get the honey? The What's... honey. <laughs> That's always the fun part. That's what everybody wants. Uh -huh. So harvesting honey. So you always have your box of bees. And then whenever a nectar flow is coming to town, you're going to put a honey super box on top with the queen excluder. So it's a metal grate and the queen is not able to go up top to lay eggs. Mm. So the bees will utilize that source to put all of their honey. So sometimes I've harvested honey within like three weeks of putting the super on. Sometimes it takes like three months. It's always different. Interesting. But once they fill up the box, all of the honey will be capped with white cappings, and that's how you know it's ready to harvest. You wanted to have mm. cappings, or it's not ready. They put a lot of work into the honey. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, when what's, you're how do you know when it's gonna like nectar flow? Like, what's this? When do you do that? Put the grate. And you know, get it spring going. and fall. Um, there's a lot of beekeeping groups that I'm in, <laughs> so everyone kind of talks about it. <laughs> so you have a general idea of like what's blooming. Especially where you are, it's different areas. It's uh, a seasonal thing. Yeah. So I think, uh, so we'll do a fall harvest, hopefully. So we'll probably put the supers on. I'm patient. In, I don't know about September, but probably October. And then we'll ideally harvest in November. Gotcha. Yeah. In Florida, we're lucky. We can harvest a lot more than anywhere else. Really? Yeah. You would not do a winter harvest up north ever. God, they're just... <laughs> They're not doing, they're not active. No, um, winter beekeeping is a lot different. They completely close up their hives shut and just hope that they're still there like four months later. No way. Yeah, we're they really lucky here. They do it themselves? Here. Like they'll, they'll shut it down? Oh, no, like the beekeeper will go in and like close them in blankets and, you know, preserve them as much as they can and wow. feed them. And they, interesting. Mm hmm it's like hibernation mode. Right? Yeah, they hibernate the bees. That's a great way to put it. <laughs> cool. Yeah, here in Florida, it's just like, all right, girls, have a good time. <laughs> wow, it's it's all 365, 24 seven. It's the here. endless summer. <laughs> <laughs> the endless summer. Yeah. 
I'm stoked on these bees. I'm so excited. I know. I'm excited for you to like see what they're about. You get to learn how to beekeep. It's fun. Are we going to get the suit? Are we going to look be out there? I have an extra jacket for you. Okay. I don't do the full suit uh, for no good reason at all. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> what if they get inside your jacket? They, they don't do that. Uh, <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> you know, sometimes things could happen. No, you just like wear tighter pants and like I guess tuck your jacket in if you want. Yeah. I'm not the best when it comes to safety with my suit. I've had some accidents. Really? Yeah. Have you gotten like lit up before? Oh, 100 percent. Really? Um, one time I was <laughs> going through frames with a friend, and it was a frame where they had built all the comb, but it wasn't stuck. So I flipped it and all of the comb with all the bees fell right on my feet. And I don't think I was wearing shoes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Just like destroyed my feet. It was so painful. Wow. Um, another the time. The bees were probably pa in pain though. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> they were. I felt so bad. <laughs> I just destroyed them. Like, oh my God. <laughs> they were mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious it's not it probably wasn't funny then no it was so scary <laughs> it took me like three months to recover really? from that mentally yeah yeah well because my biggest fear just like because i didn't really know anything about bees was just them like swarming and attacking me out of nowhere which would never happen mm. um but i always was really scared of that so it was the closest i had yeah. gotten to it so it definitely freaked me out a little right. bit but they like back up. They would didn't swarm and like no. go all in. Okay. We literally went back 15 minutes later and like wrapped the comb <laughs> back up and put them in the box and then we were done for the day. But it was Got fine. You. No more stings after that. Really? Yeah, they were fine. Cool. You just smoke them and hope they don't smell you. Got it. What do you smoke them with to like relax them? Um, so it doesn't like, really relax them. That's like kind mass. of like a <laughs> yeah. No, you just burn. You know whatever. So I usually burn pine needles because they burn the best and the longest. Anything you said. Yeah, the smoke. Well, nothing like toxic, but yeah, the smoke yeah. is really used to hide all of the smells. Bees are huge on smell and pheromones. Got it. So like if you get stung, for example, which you'll probably find out, we are going to smoke the affected area. That way, when you're still getting in the hive, they won't smell that on you and be like, oh, this is an intruder. This is bad. We should like attack his hand. Mm. Um, so that's really what smoke is used for. Um, people also say it can simulate like wildfire wildfires. So they'll go into hiding and just start eating the honey. Um, so like if there's a lot of bees in an area that you need to work in, you'll smoke them and get them out of the way. Mm. But it doesn't actually do anything to them. You would never want to. Got it you know smoke them out yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> so you're wearing white they, they i've heard like i'm wearing black oh I've heard, right mm -hmm. that's they a would, good point they would they would not like that they tend to not like black a whole lot just because it's like dark big objects could be like a bear i guess you could say um a but bear, like i right. usually wear like a white jacket and blue jeans and no shoes and everything's <laughs> fine got it i've also had friends who would like stand next to me in all black and they might be a little more like attracted. Like I have dark hair, right? So if I'm in the mm. backyard, sometimes they get in my hair. I don't really notice it that much, to be honest. Got it. But my all bees are different. They all have different personalities. Interesting. Every hive has a different temperament. Wow. Um, You'll notice it. 100%. Very cool. Like, all my girls are really calm. I don't have issues, but I've heard people that are like, mm. as soon as I got in my hive, I got attacked like 15 times through my coat. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, maybe not a the, good time. Those bees had something that happened to them when they were young. Who knows? An angry queen, <laughs> bad genetics. An queen. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, this has been a lot of fun, Alexis. This has been up. fun. Thanks for Heck having yeah. me, man. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I'm excited. We're gonna be eating those combs. Yes, soon. we'll get some honeycomb for you. Heck yeah! It'll be a good time. Heck yeah! How can people find out about you or any anything you're into? Um, if you want to learn more about the bees and see my shark stuff, you can follow me on Instagram. It's Alexis Ray with two I's and two E's. I also have a TikTok <laughs> that I post Perfect. all my bee videos on. Uh, it's at the beekeeper girl. Nice and easy. Perfect. Uh, yeah. I live in Jupiter. If anybody wants to beekeep, I'm always around. Yeah. Super rad. Check out Alexis. Um, is there anything else you want to share with the world before we get out of here? Um, anything at all? No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> No, no yeah. I don't know. Cool. B, B, everybody. B. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming on. Thank you. <laughs>